Today's big new release is Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. Yeah, so obviously this is number five now, and a fra- another franchise five. which is probably never going to die. So, I mean, unlike certain franchises we've been talking about, this one can run and run. It's very rare that a, film, a series can get a film number five and still be good. Uh, in the trailer it specifically states, Jeremy Renner specifically states with his usual Jeremy Renner face, this might be our last mission. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Is it mm. F? Because a bit tongue in cheek there. Yeah, yeah, I know, but like, you know, but and it that just really typifies what the entire series is about. Really, it is completely balls to the wall action, just ev- everything that you would expect from some, sort of a Tom Cruise vehicle. This is essentially, this is probably the epitome of Hollywood. Just like the loud explosions, the sort of set pieces that you've got. You sort of the what the wry in joke humor. You've just got the sort of knowingness about it all, and then you've got Tom Cruise, who really is probably one of the last big action stars out there, along like Will Smith and Matt Damon. I mean, I can't really name anymore after that. Like Matthew McConaughey is he really. Could you tell? Nah, would no. he be recognised by anybody in the mainstream? Like who doesn't really watch many films? I don't know. I mean, it depends. I don't know. But not really. Not for action. But like, I mean, like Vince Vaughn, maybe. And that's not, no. Not, not. But <laughs> no. I mean, like, as you think about like other action stars who are coming up right now that you don't really know. Yeah, you know, they are coming up like um, Chris Pratt, who's you don't really. We need do. some new household names. Yeah, we need saying. some new. We need some new big guys to come up and be the best. You know, we need to be. They need to be the best. They need to be the best. You know, they need to take the place of those who have just been so be around for decades, nearly, and especially Tom Cruise, obviously. But um, hopefully, but yeah. we're, hopefully, we're Tom will do it. We're yeah. Max. Um, yeah, Tom. Yeah. Oh yeah, Tom Hardy. Tom yeah. Hardy. Uh huh. Is he gonna just be like Mel Gibson? Just like he, he makes a career off just being like the broody action star. Well, well if, if he doesn't go off the deep end, then yeah, uh, yeah. he's got a legend. Co- he's, already, he's, it's it's actually, he's already been off the deep end and climbed back up. But like that's yeah, I, yeah. I hope he doesn't go into that stomach. Obviously, Locke was great with Tom Hardy, and obviously, yeah. like you said, the legend. legend coming out. Like, that's really good. Tom Hardy uh, twice. Uh, the, re- the Revenant. Su- yeah, I'm a sucker for that yeah. gimmick, the sort of split screen twins thing. I'm a sucker yeah, for that. I love completely. the double. Yeah, yeah. but um, but the, I mean, no one ever saw them together, did we? In the double. Jesse Eisenberg's character, but I don't guess anyway. Did. Yeah, did. Oh yeah, a few times. Yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. But um, yeah, but um, just see what we're getting off to. <laughs> but um, yeah. So um, real. What was I going on about? <laughs> uh, God damn it, Tom Cruise. Oh no, yeah, I'm saying. Um, so Tom Cruise Top has come under a bit of unfair fire re- recently because obviously, I mean, he did start off with sort of like lesser like n- well not action at all really I mean obviously he had Magnolia he had um, Jerry Sp- Jerry what was it? Jerry Springer no Jerry Maguire Jerry Maguire <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Maguire <laughs> Jerry, I, I haven't seen it, it was Jerry, Jerry Maguire and obviously <laughs> Cocktail as well and uh, but obviously and then he's sort of sort of gone under the more stuff like Born on the 4th of July and obviously in the past five years he's had loads of action stuff he's had Oblivion which was really boring and then Jet Amor which was really good yeah. and now he's obviously been in these Mission Impossible films since like 96 since the first one Um so he's become under a bit of flack for just going for the easy rules and trying to get the big paychecks. But one thing you can never just sort of deny him of, despite being you know into freaky things about with Scientology and stuff, mm-hmm. you can never deny he's a man who knows how to sell films and entertain people and generally just try his very best. And obviously that's attested to in the fact that he loves practical effects. And obviously, literally all of the hype around Mission Impossible 5 has been surrounding the fact that it is, you know, it's going to be... It's going to be another in the series, obviously, but the fact that it's got the plane scene, which we've which, all yeah we've all saw at the end of every trailer for Mission Impossible, and I can see with with pleasingness that it's the first thing in the film. It's not the big stunt. It is the first stunt. It is literally the first thing. Like, the first shot of the film is them in the field before the plane takes off. Now that really surprised me, and that really set the precedent for what was going to happen. Because if you flow, if you like blow the big money shot that they have used in the in, in, in the trailers, if that's what everyone thought was going to be in the end, straight away, then you know you're in for a good ride. Because if they haven't spoiled anything, they literally didn't spoil anything in the last forty minutes. Like, no, none, none of that is in the trailer. Like, none of it is in the trailer at all. I mean, literally, so I didn't know where it was going because, um, but that's the the main thing about Mission Impossible. Obviously, number four, I hadn't seen, I didn't even know it existed. I think I said this on the on the show before. I, don't, I know I've said it on the podcast, but not the show. I didn't know it existed until you two told me like last year. So that that kind of kind of bad of me, really. I mean, I don't know how it sort of evaded me completely. But um, you obviously watched it just last night, didn't you? And I only watched it last week. Yeah. So we've both had a very recent screenings. I was, I, I thought it was probably the second best so far. But um, uh, I thought it was all right. I was majorly disappointed. All right. No, yeah, yeah, it's all, all right. All, to yeah, all like, right. It was just like. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. But um, obviously, I was massively disappointed by the fact that Ving Rhames had a thirty-second cameo, which is just like 
just no. Like, he's, he's one of the biggest parts of the whole thing, and that, I, just, I wasn't very happy with that at all. I can happily say that he's in a lot more of this. He's in a mass majority of the whole film. He's mm-hmm. got a big role to play, but um, the big thing about Mission Impossible is that they just sort of rotate its cast a lot. Obviously, you bring in quite a new food, probably. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson is the new big name coming in this time, obviously, as the new. I don't think Love and Rest is fair. No, I don't know. Fem- female, 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 female agent. Female agent. Femme fatale. Yeah, coming in. The femme fatale. I mean, the trailers obviously sold her as being sort of like the sexy sort of temptress again, just mm. being like the sort of no, one, no holds barred sort of action star. But she is, she's a re- she's a really good addition to the cast. Obviously, Alec Baldwin's been brought in sort of the CIA boss. He adds a bit of edge when he's in it. And obviously, they've got Tom Hollander in there as the Prime Minister. From the, the role he was born to play. The role he was born to play and the, ro- <laughs> the only role he will play seemingly. But um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what you expect from a Mission Impossible film. It's just impossible missions that generally go very well for them despite the fact that... Like, I mean, there's like three times in the film where like... I mean, it, it, that's just the main sell of the Mission Impossible series really. It is just the fact that it's just so out there and it doesn't care that people just come, might, might just laugh at it for being so cheesy and over the top at times. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, I cannot count the amount of you know, I, I, can't, I can't really say what I want to say here. The amount of smug, you know, generally happy with themselves grins in the whole film. The amount yeah. of, uh, if you if you choose to accept it, you know, the, the staple of the franchise, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And the fact, like, this is impossible, you know, and then cut to Tom Cruise going, you know, yeah. smiling, just grinning his face off like a Cheshire cat. You know, that's just the charm of the franchise because it knows exactly what it is. It is just like sort of the, the it is probably the biggest tri franchise going right now after Bond. I tell you so, what, I do like though. It knows what it is, but it doesn't spend the whole film winking. Exactly, like it's it, it's, it's like it, uh-huh. it it knows that it's got this your mission should you. Yeah. But it's not sitting there going ha see from the exactly, first yeah, one. Yeah, exactly, it's yeah. like it just does it and it's exactly, fine. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, but la- actually, the last one did a little bit because yeah. the the exploding yeah. thing didn't go off I mean there are go nudge it, oh god the, the, the gadgets in the fourth one how many yeah. feeling gadgets yeah. but, this, <laughs> but one, um, this one just went you know yeah I mean yeah. But then there are callbacks to earlier Mission Impossibles in this one yeah. but they're not referenced much at all they're just there you know if you spot them you spot it's them. not sitting there jabbing you and exactly. talking like a Marvel yeah, film probably that, that's decent enough nostalgia but the thing is in this one it is just a perfect continuation after us as I said it is probably the second biggest spy franchise after Bond ahead of Shadow and Jack Ryan and probably ahead of the Bourne franchise which has been dormant ahead for four of, or five uh, years yeah, now suppose, but it has been dormant for a while so yeah, I would say I it guess, is. I guess. So, um, but yeah, so it, it has got license to do whatever it wants. Obviously, the Bond franchise is definitely going darker now, but I guess it has got sort of its no one edge back a little bit with Skyfall. But it is definitely going in that more serious. It's definitely got its no one edge back with Spectre. I, if, yeah. if 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 it is yeah. what it is, I don't want to say gritty. It's gone with a bit more hard edged Bond yeah. with with Daniel Craig. Yeah. Like you, you know what I mean. It has gone hard edged. Well, it's, yeah, it's, gone, it's, it's gone, all like slick it's grounded and, a little more. Yeah. You know, it's a lot more sort of the, the Bond Dalton. Yeah, I always wonder. Yeah. It, 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 Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was too Poor ahead of Dalton. Too ahead of his time. Yeah, uh-huh. but um, yeah, so he's just gone that way, obviously. And now, so this gives Mission Possible a bit more. Okay, we can be a little more fun, you know. We can be a little more aesthetic. And a big part of that is, of course, the fact that it has such an amazing cast to, to sort of bring it all together. Tom Cruise, obviously, being one of the last major action stars, has just that incredible charisma that he has about himself, and the fact that he is just such an amazing force on screen. You know, I mean, they, they even play it up in the first minute. There's literally a, a girl who's like, "I've heard stories about you," and then he just he just says. And you can feel the ego yeah, bursting just do, out. It's like ego <laughs> rising. You know, <laughs> turn around. And say, I'm Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> <pretty much. laughs> That's pretty much what it would be. I mean, you know, he's, he he knows exactly who he is, but he's not a dick about it. You know, he is Tom Cruise. You know, he is he is the man of the hour. He is the biggest man on on campus. You know, he he is the man. He is the man to beat. Really, he's, he's sort of Hollywood's golden boy. Completely, he is the, he's the main man. And obviously, you've got all of these amazing people surrounding. Obviously, Rebecca Ferguson brought in as this shadowy agent. Who's you know she performs admirably as well. She's really good in it. Obviously, Ving Rhames back. He brings the pain. Jeremy Renner, who I'm I'm still not really a. No, not not really into him. Pretty much, really. Mm. I mean, but um, he, he does do well here. And obviously, you've got Alec Baldwin as the CIA boss, who's he got a really a few good really lines there. Simon Pegg, obviously, he's probably been given the biggest sort of upgrade of a role this time. Yeah, especially like he's been he's been brought in as a field agent this time, which is really strange. Like like a proper like he's obviously we used to see him set behind a computer, but now he's really just getting in there. You know, doing the he's doing the car chases with Tom Cruise. He's there at the set pieces, helping along. And that really brings it. So, I mean, I do like to see sort of that ensemble that's getting on with their jobs. You know, you've got the two distinct teams of, of Benji and Ethan, and then you've got Ving Rhames and um, Jeremy Renner along with the ride as well. But uh, I just do I just do like how it is, just like, 
it does you, you're totally right exactly what you say it's not it's not knowing as in the fact that it's nudging you at every single time. It's perfectly aware that it's cheesy and hammy, uh-huh. but it's not sitting there going, hey, look, it's cheesy it's, and hammy. It's adept in the rules of its own universe alongside being, you know, the, the charm that the series brings. Obviously, this time we've got uh, Ethan Hunt going after the shadowy syndicate, which he suspects to be sort of behind a bunch of schemes that he's failed to track down over the past few months, and they're basically the anti-IMF, which is what they're being sold as. Which w- is, Would you say they were a uh, rogue nation? Trained to do what we do. <laughs> it's impossible to track them down. Impossible. Nothing is impossible. But um, but yeah. So obviously they have to track them down, and they're headed up by Sean. Oh, I've forgotten. Oh God. Sean Harris. Sean Harris. There we go. Sean Harris, who is this uh, ex an ex British British intelligence agent called Solomon Kane and he's. A, I mean, the one thing Mission Impossible's never had is good villains even with Philip Seymour Hoffman and I think this is probably the best villain they've had really he probably gets the most screen time even if mm. his voice is a bit weird like I did I did, I did. did. it was sort of a, like a cross between Jude Law and Black Sea and Eddie Redmayne and Jupiter Ascender yeah, I was going to say yeah, Redmayne, like, it, was, yeah. it was a bit strange when I was like you bring him to me <laughs> like just like it was just it was a really strange accent, but he does—he does—he does have a bit of, you know, he does have a bit of danger to him, and I really did like that. And he's one of those villains who just goes out and does the job himself in the end. You know, it's, he's not just sitting around. But I, I do like that he was just sort of the shadowy threat, and that's what the the syndicate does, and that's what this film does best. Really, it's the fact that it does always keep you guessing. You never really know what's going to happen. I mean, Rebecca Ferguson's agent isn't re- she sort of? I mean, she does like a quadruple cross throughout the film like you mm. never know what direction she's going to go in she's always got her loyalties tied up and that's what it's really good to see so you never really know what's going to happen there and it's always good to see that I just it always that's what the film does best it always keeps you guessing it keeps you on your toes you never really know what's going to go on and does that with the the perfect Mission Impossible charm that we've all going to love even if it isn't the best film series around you know it knows exactly what it is they're all fun to watch if nothing else they just they, they've always got amazing set pieces I mean the, the set piece with the water that you've seen in the trailer the set pieces near the end you know all doing that with a smile on the face and a cigar in its mouth knowing exactly what it is with a great ensemble cast there you go. Yeah. Uh, just, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah Joe. Anything, anything, well. anything to add on that? I've always yeah. been the same. Mission Impossible to film for set pieces. It's, yeah, all, exactly. it's literally been okay. Here's an awesome thing. We need to break into yeah. it. We need to do something. We need to take something, and it's impossible. Right from. But right we're going. But we're going to make it possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And but, it was good to see they've actually got a villain with a bit of oomph to him. Because yeah. Mission Impossible Four didn't really feel it. Nah. Didn't really feel the villain. <laughs> nah, but no. it, it was overall. It was a fun little yeah. film. But uh, yeah. Really, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. It was a boatload of fun. But obviously, the set pieces right from the first one with the rattling down, you know, the yeah. iconic one. Like so it's, it's always been. It's always, it's always been uh-huh. a bit of that. And you've got. I, I don't. I don't. I don't buy this whole argument with how oh practical effects that must be the better. The movie's better than doing with CGI. Yeah. There's got to be a balance, you know. Like with Mad Max, obviously, plenty of special effects, but there's, there's decent. But it did need a CG lot of as CGI. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what they're using. Sort of the resources from each. I mean, obviously, that shot in the trailer in Mad Max where they do the pole vault. The background is filmed on a sound stage, and all about the mix in together you know they're brought in together using CGI but they're still practical effects mm-hmm. you know it's it's a good thing to have a mix and that's what this did. obviously Tom Cruise you, you, you've got to admire him for doing these things Ooh, right? yeah. you've got to admire him and I mean, obviously you told us about the knife one in Mission, in Mission oh, Impossible yeah, yeah, yeah the, the knife yeah. stunt if you wanted to search that on YouTube it's a great little thing but um, you know for a man who has such dedication to his craft just having fun really but not in a fun way that Adam Sandler does his films yes. you know fun with yeah. his buddies these are films that actually try and do it and actually risk a bit of injury you know to do it so that, that, you, that, you kind of just you kind of take it away it's just great fun. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of Sandler, we've got some Sandler in a couple of weeks. But yeah. we're all excited for that. Pixels yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. in two weeks' time. Yeah, I really, really liked it. I thought it, it's just so much fun. I think it's up there with Mad Max in terms of how much fun yeah. I've had in the cinema this summer. And it had a scene where Rebecca Ferguson, after they've been in, in, in an opera in opera clinic, she takes her high heels off. It takes five seconds. Why couldn't Jurassic World have done that? That would have solved like, a major criticism everyone's been throwing at it. There were, no, there were no labels on the high heels. Exactly, like... Ugh. No, no product placement. No, would have lingered like for Aye. twenty seconds. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just um, riotous fun. Just you know, no. enjoy it for the set pieces, enjoy it for the snark, and just the the great ensemble cast. It's a really good time. I recommend it. Yep, yeah. there you go. Fair to say to recommend. Right then, this is what I've been waiting for all week. It's Hot Pursuit, which has, as I said, been described by some outlets as a comedy. Um, Ryan will argue the case that it is not. Um.